Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Today, I want to talk about how pocketing works in Studio One. If that term is not familiar to you, it's, a, I don't know for sure, but I think it's more of a Nashville term. When I was learning audio engineering from Nashville engineers, they would use that term a lot, pocketing. And if you think about playing with a band, the idea of playing in the pocket means you're all kind of playing together rhythmically. Um, in a recording studio, typically one of the tools that we use a lot is something called a click track, right? It's this annoying sound. And if you record with one, then you have the advantage of getting this grid in Studio One. So if you look at the way I've got this set up, you can see these are these blue tracks are a drum track, and you can see this these vertical lines going through are the grid lines. So every little bit thicker line is the downbeat, and then every this is a quarter note here, and it kind of divides it down however zoomed in you are. So typically by sixteenth note. So I can see the grid marks where the drums where the drummer was aiming, and then I can see if he got on or off. Now this isn't a conversation about should or shouldn't you do any time correction with drums, or even specifically using the built-in algorithms that Studio One has to automatically do some of this timing correction. Um, this is specifically for if you just want to go in and fix a few specific spots, how I do it and how Studio One makes it ridiculously easy. Uh, I used Pro Tools for years. I loved editing in Pro Tools. Once I learned how Studio One does it, I like it even better. So I'm going to show you that now. So let's Quickly go through and just find a spot where maybe, let's say where maybe he gets ahead of the beat. I feel like right at the beginning, this is uh, my drummer, Tim Horsley. He is annoyingly on time. Uh, I think the only times he gets off is because I'm so off in my guitar part, but I feel like drums is a good place to demonstrate this. So let's, let me give you a little bit of a pre-roll and we'll listen along to the drums with, uh, with the click and then we'll find a spot to go in and tweak. So I'm not looking for perfection, but just for the sake of argument, let's say this one, this snare hit here comes in a little bit early. We can see this is the downbeat. It's a little bit ahead. And if we listen, you can hear it a little bit. Dun, dun, dun. It's just a little jumped ahead. So let's lay that back on the beat. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is if you're working on specifically drums where they were all recorded at the same time, you want to make sure you group them together and move them all. If I just move this snare, I'm not accomplishing anything. I have to move everything together. And the easy way to do that, if you've got everything in a folder already, is to just click that button. Now they're all grouped. So if I select this Again, they'll all be selected, and whatever I do to one happens to the others. The next thing you might want to do is to turn off Snap to Grid, which is this button here, or I just press N on the keyboard, and that will allow me to move things a little more finely without it trying to snap it to the grid. So this is the culprit here, right? At the bar six, I believe. So it's a little ahead of the beat. So how do we solve this? What I do is the way I set things up, I've got things grouped, I've got the snap to grid turned off, I'm using this link arrow and range tool mode, and I have my alternate tool set up as the split tool. So the way you do that, by the way, in case you didn't know, is with this selected, if I press the one key on my keyboard, the one here just above the letter Q, you can see that thing is cycling between several different options. That's your alternate what actually what tool comes up when you press the command key or the control key on the PC. So right now, it's just an arrow, right? But if I press, I'm hovering over an event and I press command, it turns into the cut tool or whatever tool I have selected up there. So this is what I have set up probably most of the time. But I want to cut this just before this snare hit. So like right here. And I like to leave a little bit of a gap so there's room for a fade. So I cut it here. And then I'm going to... I'm going to cut over here. So cut just before the next hit. So we're just dealing with this one snare hit. So I select it by clicking here in the bottom part of the region. Command Option turns the cursor into this weird little side to side tool. And then it gets really fun from here. I can just click and drag and I can move the underlying audio to get that snare to line up a little better with the downbeat. Now I can do it exact or I can do it a part of the way. Uh, doesn't really matter for me. 
Let's do it all the way over here. Now that I've done that, I just press X on the keyboard and it will do a crossfade before and after. That's super handy because I don't want any of those pops and clicks in the audio, which I talked about in a previous video. So now let's listen to see how that sounds. We'll have to rewind a little bit. Sounds good. It's more in line with what the rest of them are doing. But you might notice that next kick hit is also early. Typically, when someone plays a little ahead of the beat or behind the beat, they don't do it for one note, they do it for a handful of notes. So we can come in here, and this one's already chopped up on the front half, we can come chop it up on the back half. Um, and this second kick hit, so boom, boom, it goes boom, boom, pa. This one's actually fine, so let's chop it here, and let's just move this one over a little bit. Quick crossfade, and now that section should be a lot better. If you've never done anything like this, it is remarkable what you can do with digital audio and editing. It's with a crossfade and moving things around, you can tighten things up. We don't lose the heart of the performance. This still sounds like Tim, but there's a spot where the where it came in a little early and now it's a little better and the overall song is better for it um, and you don't hear it. That's what it still gets me all these years later how you don't hear anything. For the record, here is a section that I edited during the recording session. So after Tim played, he said, hey, let me hear that section on the bridge. He said, I like the part that I played but I was a little sloppy with the timing. Let's go in and just tighten some of these up. So he literally stood looking over my shoulder and we fixed this together. So don't think this is like me betraying my drummer's trust and moving all his stuff around. This is 100% a part of the production process for sure. Yes, get it right at the source. Yes, use a good drummer. Yes, record it well. But then you do have some options to fix things digitally and you'd be hard pressed to hear any of the things that we did here. So you just heard half a dozen or more edits but you didn't actually hear them because that was what he played. It was just some of the downbeats and the hi-hats or whatever was keeping time. The, the, the boodle doom bam He kept getting a little ahead of the beat, I believe, is what happened. And so we just fixed him up a little bit. And with all the crossfades, you don't hear a single thing and everything's a lot tighter. So that is a quick tutorial on pocketing in Studio One. The process is very similar with guitars. Um, or anything else, but it's just a little bit easier because you don't have to group multiple tracks together. Um, well, not easier because drums are super easy because they're very, they happen at a very specific moment in time. A transient on a bass, as you can see here, is pretty easy to spot. Joel is also annoyingly in time on bass. Me, on the other hand, I'm a little sloppy Joe playing all over the place timing wise. Um, but you can see on a guitar part, it's a lot harder to see exactly where the downbeat is, depending on how much overdrive and things like that are happening. But like, this is a section where we all go, one, two, three, four, one, ah, ah, ah. And so let's see how clean that is. Not perfect, but the, the vibe of the song makes me think it's fine. Uh, also, this is already done, but you could come in and take these little these little stabs and you could tighten them up a little bit more. So like this one maybe should have happened a little bit sooner so we can, whoops, so we can slide that over and even slide that one back if we want. It takes, for guitar, it takes a little more massaging. I have to move it around and listen and move it and listen because it's not as visually obvious when it needs to move. Um, but either way, you can do the, uh, the whole select everything and press Q, which will engage the entire time correction for the entire piece of audio. Um, and it's a cool feature and in a pinch, I will use it just because it's quick. Um, but typically, I like to leave it alone as much as possible and only go in and fix specific spots where I'm hearing something. Otherwise, you get into this like, never-ending process of, well, I've edited the first three measures, now I must edit the rest of the song. Um, which is just, maybe there's certain types of music, like pop, for example, where that really does need to be locked in that tightly. But for me, I just want to find certain spots. If something stands out to me and says, hey, I'm not playing right, I'll go fix that little area. But I won't go fix everything unless it needs to be fixed. And that's a way to keep yourself from getting bogged down and taking forever to finish a project. All right, that's it for today. Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.